finally for off-road, I'd just like to talk about the slip angle consequences of driving off-road and the tyre selection for off-road and how that changes your slip angles. Obviously compared to most road tyres, well low profile tyres anyway, we end up with a much higher sidewall on an off-road tyre for our given width. What this means is, is that for a given force down here, we'll end up with a larger deflection. Now this means a larger peak slip angle. But obviously we have a smaller lateral grip off-road because we're slipping more. So this sort of balances out and depending on the construction it will be roughly the same. But there's another factor here which is that off-road tyres are often designed to absorb a little bit more bump. So again they soften the sidewalls a bit. That's why we end up with more slip angle overall. Factor in that additional slip angle, effective slip angle coming off the ground. And this is why you see off-road cars running at much larger angles. If you think about it, the rear tyres can't steer. So you've got to get your slip angle from the rears by basically oversteering into a corner. And this is why oversteer is so desirable on off-road cars compared to on-road cars where it's generally not wanted. Because you want your off-road car to oversteer because you need that bigger slip angle at the rear. So you may have a peak peak grip slip angle of say 20 degrees. So that means your chassis slip angle has to be 20 degrees to get that out of there. And many people ask me why you use oversteer off-road and that's largely the reason. 